Okay, so I am currently in Algeria. I got here yesterday morning and right when I arrived, I went straight to bed and without even realizing it, I slept for 22 hours. 6.30 in the morning now and I'm headed to Libya via Tunisia. To be fair, this week in the past seven days, it's been really, really bad, like really, really, really hard. I was awake for 33 hours straight at one point. Um, I traveled to six different countries. That man walked in my room at 2.45 in the morning. I was harassed on the plane last night. This guy punched me. Turns out he was drunk um, and the flight attendant said that they had someone waiting for him and we disembarked the plane. Plus I've been flying every single night. I've been on an overnight plane every single night. When I've been to six countries, probably the highlight of it was, was uh, Niger. You know, Western Africa is not a cup of tea when it comes to traveling, especially as a foreigner, as a woman too. It's probably the most difficult area of the world that I've ever traveled in my entire life. I mean, from bribes, <sighs> the police had gotten involved twice and these situations that were out of my control. You know, I have a lot of discrimination when it comes to being a woman over there. I don't want to focus on the negatives, but it's been a really difficult week. And I think, you know, I just needed to like honor my body, whatever it was saying when I needed to sleep for 22 hours. I'm really excited to go to Libya. And to be honest, uh, I like Morocco. I like Egypt, um, Algeria, I, I haven't seen too much of, but I really like the culture of Northern Africa. The Middle East is my favorite region of the entire world. And you can see how that kind of the traditional, the ways kind of carry through throughout Northern Africa. And I really like that. So I'm actually really excited to go to Libya and see how it is. I'm gonna be wearing the hijab and covering up a little bit. Yeah, and I have three friends over there who have been helping out and I'm gonna be staying with one of their families. So I think it's gonna be a good experience. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Just wanted to tune you guys in. I actually have to go, I have to head out catch my flight, two flights to get to Libya, and then yeah, I'll see you guys later. So I'm in the bathroom right now, and I'm going to put the hijab on, and I know I do it in like all my videos, but I have watched a bunch of videos on how to do it properly, and I'm gonna show you guys how I try to do it properly. <laughs> after all this time. Finally, at the end of my trip, after a year, learning how to do it properly. <laughs> feel like I'm choking but that's good because I made it tight but it's like not the right scarf but at least it covers you know and it's on so it's gonna stay so this is my outfit it's I think it's okay I just wish this were bigger but I think I should have brought my one from Somalia this is okay I think it's just gotta, just gotta keep working with it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bye. We shall reach uh, Nigeria International Airport. Our next stop so we get uh, 55 minutes of flight. Welcome to Antigua International Airport. just in case but yeah they're so nice letting me stay at their house and I'm staying in this flat that's that's part of their house and 
they're so sweet they organize like they set up everything for me in the kitchen there's like dates and fruit and like breakfast stuff and it's really nice this is just kind of the living room area and this is the kitchen and the bedroom it's messy i was just in it but yeah so they're really nice really sweet yeah last night i had some issues getting um getting through the border there were some problems and i don't think i'm going to go into it right now but i'm supposed to be meeting with the minister of tourism this morning and then going to the old town today but I'm a little bit nervous and I was totally fine like about going out and then my dad uh, emailed me all this stuff about kidnapping and then my friend's sister was telling me last night all about the kidnapping and then I was researching all about the kidnapping and it's not good here. It's a lot of kidnapping um, and it makes me more nervous to go out. Part of me really doesn't want to go out at all and just wants to like stay here all day and until I leave tomorrow morning. It's just, do I take the risk or not? This is what I was facing in Somalia and Afghanistan. So part of me is like a really big risk taker in that way. I don't know why, but I guess, I guess I'm gonna go out there and take a risk and just hope for the best. And um, we'll see. myself right now yeah you can hear me talking to myself I totally forgot the camera was on but yeah I'm actually nervous about this I'm nervous guys I don't know what to do I think this is the most nervous I've been to go outside on this whole entire trip like the most nervous for sure Thank you. 
6 in the morning. I didn't really film a fourth of what I did here in Libya, so really sorry about that. I just kind of feel like filming people that, you know, I become close with, that I meet on this trip, is kind of like intrusion. I don't want to just whip out my camera and start filming when we're like having a really good conversation and getting to know each other. To me, that just feels like I wouldn't want someone to do that to me. So sorry guys, but you didn't even get to see like the least bit of what I did here in Libya. But I put my complete trust in, in the hands of strangers coming here to Libya and staying with a family and um, trusting a couple guys who I've never met before, um, but who I learned to trust pretty quickly to help with my experience in Libya. Yeah, from, from the get-go, getting on the plane and a man giving up his seat so I could sit next to the window and get my time lapse, um, to the flight attendants being really nice to me, and everything except for arriving at the border. Uh, that's kind of when I experienced some problems, being held up there because I thought that I was in the CIA or like a spy. but. It, the whole experience here, I was a little freaked out, you know, because you hear about the kidnapping and um, my friend's sister was telling me about that, but it's a lot of people are out and about. It's not like it's a, it's like a dead zone. Like no one's really like people are staying inside their homes, not at all. And I felt really safe with everyone I was with. I met a really cool guy, Omar, who's been to like 115 countries. We sat for coffee last night and talked about our experiences. Yeah, I, I went, went around the city. Uh, with my friends here. I'm just not going to name names because I I just want to respect people's, you know, privacy and the more I travel the more I <sighs> these experiences are so sacred to me and the people that I meet um and and not everything has to be some big YouTube thing, but I just want to give you guys a little bit of a taste of Libya and the meeting with the Minister of Tourism and the Ministry was really amazing and I really um, they welcomed me back like with open arms to really see more of their country and spend some more time here. I'm totally going to take them up on that because I think they're so beautiful. I mean, they gave me like, a, this bag full of like books and CDs all about like Libya. I mean, it looks like there's some really beautiful places, like no joke. So I have to come back and, and spend more time here. I'm headed out today and I have a long travel day. The next few days are gonna be really long, but I'm just really grateful for this. I mean, it was such an amazing, amazing, my friend's mom, her cooking, like amazing. I, I've eaten more, I ate more yesterday than I've eaten past month. I mean, it's been, it was really delicious food. Amazing, homemade pizza and like, anyways, I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this and got a little taste of Libya on uh, not even like a taste, um, but you could at least see my experience a little bit. And yeah, I'm out now and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.